This is the Friday Night Fever Afterburn, sponsored by Pete and Heating and Air Conditioning. Welcome to Friday Night Fever Afterburn, week seven of the high school football season. We are on the downhill track, and things are really starting to take shape. We had a lot of exciting games tonight. Some not exciting as far as a fan standpoint, yeah. but still a lot of telling games tonight. We're going to dive right into the scores. We had a lot of fun ones tonight. Start us off with uh, your game of the week over in Defeniac Springs. Game of the week. Mariana, 4-1 and Mariana on the road visiting 5-0 and Walton. So when I left, it was a 14-7 game, and then it ended up being a 48-14 game. Another undefeated team, we have the Bozeman Bucks hosting a was undefeated team 35 to 9 is that final bucks remain undefeated and then a low scoring battle in Bluntstown. the tigers pulled off 7 to 0 over the pirates and then over in tommy oliver tonight rutherford gets their first win 23 to 9 we had a big one a high scoring game up in vernon tonight port st joe going to beat those jackets by 30 points 39 to 9 we were Hitchka, a big win for those Gators going on the road and defeating a Liberty County that's won three straight games. They snapped that win streak. Big win for those Gators tonight, 14 to 7. Cottonale, their offense is back. They put up 70 points tonight against Franklin County. 70 to 28 is the final score for that crew over there. And then Mosley, a tough loss, 31 to 35 against Navarre going on the road. That one, of course, coming down to the Last few minutes, Mosley going to lose. And just a couple more. South Walton also on the road at Choctaw. That final 66-30. to 30. Then Holmes County also out there on the road. But they pull off a big win. Running clock 55-7 to 7 is that final. Right, and I already see those Holmes County faithful here in the comments talking about them. <laughs> Blue Devils roll tonight. That's right. Yeah. We're clearly, you know, not going to make it all the way over to Jay to get those highlights. Unfortunately, would have got a lot of touchdowns, it looks like. Yeah. But Holmes County putting a statement. And right now, as far as the rankings and as far as what we've seen, they, they are the team to beat in our area right now as far as class one R goes. Mm -hmm. Bozeman Bucks kind of creeping on the doorstep. It looks I'm, like we got a one two punch. Yeah, I mean, when you're undefeated, what else can you say? Right. Well, we're going to dive right into that game of the week, which turned into a pretty lopsided score, but Walton rolling here, staying undefeated. Take us to that one, Kaylee. Yeah, it was a really entertaining game to start, obviously, right off the bat. Bettenhausen to Nuke McKenzie. He takes it to the house. Easy. Walton up seven to zero. And then. Mariana, they're trekking it down the field. You know, every everyone's attention is on Amari Clemens. That's kind of where Mariana's offense is slowing down. A big grab from there, getting the penalty, still moving the ball. So, oppressive grab. But everyone's kind of looking at Clemens moving the ball. So, that's been an issue. Mariana's offense trying to adapt to that. They get it all the way down towards the end zone and turnover on downs. And then Walton, this is the next drive, bringing it back. Ball pops out, turns it over on the one-yard line. That was big for Mariana, but again, having to punt there. So it was a lot of back and forth, but it was a really t entertaining game. You see Nuke McKenzie hit the end zone again, and then Mariana able to punch in um, another sh one score before I left, 14-7. to Walton just kind of takes it away. I know it was a big game in the second half. Mariana didn't score in the second half of the game, and I know that Dalton Colmets had a big 84-yard reception um, in the game as well. So, I mean, Walton looks really good. Both teams have a lot of discipline, I will say. That's something I noticed from both sides of the ball. Penalties, there was a good amount of penalties, but, you know, on late hits, unnecessary roughness, things like that. Obviously, penalties you don't want to have, but the line looked really solid. Only when I was there, one offside, so... Both of these teams, I think Marianne is just struggling how to adapt with Clemens being in the spotlight now, but Walton really knew how to contain him. I know that that was their goal this week, and Walton looked really good. Right, that Walton defense has been stout this year, and of course, to allow a team like Marianna that's probably been averaging with on the upper end of 35-plus a game, oh, easily, you know, they, easily. They, to hold them to two scores is pretty impressive, and Walton right now clearly – the top team in our area as far as all classifications go. The FHSAA had them at number two in Class 2 Suburban this week, number 13 in the entire state of Florida. I, I did the math. I went through it. I checked the geography. That was the highest ranking yeah. anywhere north of St. Augustine and west 
of Jacksonville. So they had a Jacksonville team in that top 10 range, but everything west of here, so Panhandle, Big Ben, Walton was the number one ranked team in the area. They kind of proved it tonight with a big win over oh, yeah. Mariana. So they are now, is that 6-0 or 7-0 for Walton? 6-0. 6-0 for the Walton Braves. A big win for them tonight against Mariana. That's now two losses in a row for Mariana. Uh, certainly going to be looking to bounce back mm -hmm. next week. Taking a look at a couple of comments, I see a score correction, Holmes County versus Jay. Uh, the score that we had on that one was, what, 50 55 to 7 was the score that we have. Uh, I'm not sure if Jay scored in garbage time. But the score we had was 55 to 7. We'll try to get that cleared up later on. I got 55 to 13. 55 to 13. Mm -hmm. Okay, 55 to 13 was the final score. So, gonna give Jay a couple extra points. You know, give give the <laughs> give Jay a couple extra. We just went Holmes County to look, to look closer, so good. <laughs> 55 to 13 was the final in Holmes County's favor. Going to go to Bozeman tonight. This was one of two matchups statewide that had undefeated against undefeated. Bozeman wearing those black jerseys. I'm going to save my comments on those black jerseys for now. Black and the Navy, that was a bold combo. But Bozeman <laughs> getting the job done tonight. Chance Jenkins, he's been electric all year long on both sides of the ball. He was making the plays early. Peyton Gay. He took some shots in the first quarter. He really did. They were bringing him up. I was a little worried for his health, but he kept grinding. He kept rolling with it. Uh, this is a play here that I, I know a lot of people thought that Chance was down. It looked like he kind of kept himself up. It was a fumble, but Bozeman's defense was incredible in the first half and clearly through the rest of the game because they only allowed nine points to a team that averages around 35 points per game. But Peyton Gay, he got the job done with his feet. He got the job done through the air. They really turned it on in the second half. Uh, it was 14-3 to at the break. You got Peyton Gay throwing to Colton McClellan here. That's a you know a senior to a young guy, and he's got weapons all over the field. But this Bozeman team is now 6-0 and for the first time in school history. The first time in school history they got 4-0. I see Mr. Oswald down there. I'm sure that's... Uh, our fearless defender, Trevor Oswald's dad. I'm just going to take an assumption there. Trevor, you know, leading the class in tackles. He's been a beast this year. That oh, whole yeah. Bozeman defense, if there's anything that I took away from this game is, wow, that Bozeman defense is for real. They are the real deal. They were rushing to the ball, whether Jenkins or Oswald. We had guys just running downfield, making tackles. That Destin offense averages mm -hmm. over 30 points per game this year. They are undefeated. Bozeman holds them to nine. They are the real deal, in my opinion. Well, I think it's always nice to hear you give so much credit to the defense because when we see these highlights that, you know, other people go shoot those games and we're just cutting them up or we're just reading them, we don't get to see all of the impact that the defense has. We don't get to see all those fine things that happen in the game that show you when a team really has potential. I mean, we see Chance Gaynor, we see Peyton Gay, we see those impressive players, and not to say that they aren't impressive, but, you know, it takes two to tango. So it's good to see and hear that defense get its credit as well. Ryan Bozeman, I mean, that that is a team that's got a lot of athletes all over the field. Chance Jenkins, of course, you know, a team like Arnold really could have used him this year. They had some transfers coming in, and they certainly helped that Bozeman team. They are the real deal. They got a defense that could take them pretty far this season. Right now, 6-0, but then they got St. Joe, they got Chipley, they got Holmes County. So if you get through Chipley and Holmes County undefeated, I will really, really be a believer. Right now, up until this point, I didn't really like the competition that Bozeman had played. It's a, are they the real deal? They've beat up on some bad teams, but they outscored those bad teams by 140 points. Coming to the night, Bozeman making a statement. So now 6-0, we have Walton and we have Bozeman are the only undefeated teams right now. So yeah, that EG Green squad, they, uh, they were looking pretty good coming into the night, but Bozeman sending them back in 35 to nine, the final score. We got Bluntstown and Sneeds. This one was supposed to be, you know, a game that coming into the season, we thought for sure, this might be not only the game a week, but maybe the regular season matchup of the year. Uh, these two played a couple times last year, played in the region final, and the score much different because Bluntstown, I think, won 49 to 14 in the region final last year, and then of course a seven to nothing one tonight. What did you see from tonight's seven to nothing game that maybe the coaches would have liked, maybe not the fans? Yeah, you know, it's hard to tell with these two teams. Um, you know, high expectations for both of them for sure. I 
really like the performance I saw out of uh, Bluntstown last week from the highlights. Was expecting kind of to see that momentum again. Obviously facing a tough defense this week with Sneeds. I know defense was something that they really worked on this season. So it makes you wonder also what's happening with Sneeds. We see Jason Patterson there. I mean, an impressive, you know, leaping over um, Washington and then stepping out of bounds. But it just it just makes you wonder kind of what's going on with Sneeds and then on the side with Bluntstown, I I want to keep seeing those performances that, that we saw last week. The offense really clicking, King really clicking. And, you know, it just, it, you face a different defense every week. So I wasn't there. I didn't see all that happen, but not what I was expecting. A 7-0 to zero and, and a second half with no scores did really surprise me from this matchup. Right, and now we got Sneeds two games under five hundred. Uh, that's now four mm-hmm. and two. So four and two, two and four. I do think They've that both been... of these teams will be clearly in the playoff mix when it comes to time. Bluntstown's gonna get rolling. I'm sure they will. I'm yeah. sure Bluntstown will a be win's a, team a win. That's gonna be you know making a playoff run. Sneeds they got a lot to figure out. They do got a lot to figure out, but I'm sure they will be in the playoff mix by the end of the year. They got a lot of seniors on the bunch. Both these teams do. These are teams that have been trying to find their way. You know, a lot of high expectations, a lot of high expectations that, you know, we put on them to start the year. But clearly this is one of those games that coaches love. Coaches love to see those seven to nothing ball games, which is a a find it out match. Fans, maybe not so much, but a big one tonight for Bluntstown to pull this out against what is a very talented Sneeds team. Pulling off a shutout. Certainly haven't looked the best they can. But these are two excellent ball clubs that by the end of the year, I guarantee you will be in the mix. Taking a look at the comments, I, I see that comment by uh, Coach Nichols down there. I, I, see, I see what he's uh, digging at. That's a, I like it. I like it. Trust me, I'm on the same wavelength <laughs> with you. I got another one talking about the biased reporting on the <laughs> Bozeman Bucks. Yeah, they've outscored their opponents by, what, 160 points now this year? 166 (laughs) points this year? Uh, Based on the eye test, I liked what I saw, mostly because of the defense. I didn't really see a whole lot from the offense while I was there, but that defense is the real deal. That's a defense that's going to contend them with Chipley, going to contend them with Holmes County, really can contend, contend them with anybody on their schedule this year. I will tell you, their first five games... Uh, I think their opponents were 7-20 and 20, uh, in the first five games. So I do agree. They did not play anybody leading up to tonight. But I did see that is a destined team that has a lot of athletes. They still got a long way to go. They haven't really played anybody either this year. Just being honest, Destin really hasn't. They got a lot of athletes over the field. And Bozeman, you know, just proved that they were the better team. Again, I see the comments. Can't compare anybody on here to Walton. I agree. Can't compare Bozeman in the slightest. I think you put Walton and Bozeman on the same field. It's not a close contest. That's just my opinion. You know, I don't think it's a close contest. It's great defense by Bozeman, but Walton, they're just going to outclass them this year. They got a lot more size. They're a bigger school. They got better athletes this year. This year. Um, We're going to move to Bay County, Rutherford, 23-9 to over Arnold. This was uh, the the Ofer Bowl. Uh, both of them coming in tonight with no wins, and <laughs> one, and one had to leave tonight that. with that one. So <laughs> Rutherford picking up the win tonight. What did you see from Rutherford? You know, sticking this one out. Second half battle, really for Rutherford. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting hearing that the score was three to three um, in the second quarter. Interesting play by Arnold. You know, going for the the fake. I thought that was an interesting tactic. Honest, obviously didn't work out, unfortunately, for Arnold. But, you know, I think it Rutherford, they've had a lot of tough teams over the last couple weeks. This one obviously going to be a little bit of an easier opponent for the Rams. Started off slow, like you said, and then I think they just kind of started to find the rhythm, figured out how to play the opponent, figured out what they needed to do, the tactics they needed to play and so i i mean good for the rams i mean figuring out what they needed to do and then being able to execute with that so exciting win a good first win for rutherford a good first win for coach floyd so i know the rams are happy tonight right it's always nice to get that first one under your belt because i had a lot of people telling me you know this rutherford team they're probably the best you know oh four team in the area for sure yeah. maybe in north florida but clearly a bunch that's just been desperate they came out mm-hmm. slow tonight I do see in the comments, 
Uh, Rams win. Arnold scored. That's right. These were the first nine points of the season for the Arnold Marlins. <laughs> uh, they were exciting for them. I think uh, outscored by their opponents over two hundred oh, to nothing I don't even this know. year. I don't it's it's know. been kind of scary, but they did get nine points tonight against that Rams defense. But Rutherford pulling it out on homecoming. That's a big one. Coach Floyd and the gang. Congratulations on your first win. Uh, I see some comments for Port St. Joe. Yeah. I see Chance Gainer. He's been electric this year. Yeah. We're about to get into some of those highlights because that team, uh, they put on a clinic tonight against Vernon. Chance Gainer, he has been a big reason for that. So we got Port St. Joe winning by 30 tonight. Wow, looks like they played in the dark here <laughs> <laughs> up in Vernon. Everybody, no lights in that stadium. <laughs> but, yes, a big interception by Chance there Gainer. Here. They were all over the field. What did you see from this game with St. Joe just putting on a – Offensive clinic. Well, I mean, I told our reporter um, that was going there tonight. You know, Chance Gainer's name you need to keep out for. Obviously, Corey Butts is the name you have to keep out for. Devin Catino, those names that you're going to hear from that team. And it was fun seeing the highlights because you see those players step up. I don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> step up to those positions. You know, Port St. Joe falling to Blentstown last week. Kind of took a beating by Blentstown. So, you know, they were coming back to make a statement tonight. And, and on the road, that's exactly what they did over Vernon. A team, Vernon, you know, they've been putting up a fight this season throughout a couple. This is a tough one for them. I know yeah, there was... this one. I felt this one in my bones. Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Our reporter said he could hear it, too, with the hit. When hey, there... he got right back up. Yeah, I mean, there was a penalty called on it, so, you know, enforce that for them. But I know Port St. Joe wanted to make a statement, and obviously a tough loss for Vernon, but I think Vernon's still kind of building getting to where they are, still put up a fight. Right. That's all you can ask for. He's, we, we called him what, the jack of all trades early yeah. on this season. Yeah. He's done it all this year. He he's going to be his offense, defense. Put the teams. ball in his hands. <laughs> he's going to make something happen. I know we said he's scored in basically every category, offense, defense, yeah. special teams, defense, you know, we got to check it out because his is. numbers got to be, you know, looking pretty good after this week. Yeah. I want him on my fantasy team. That's <laughs> for sure. But yeah, I guess the sunglasses were on the, the camera for this one tonight. <laughs> Clearly a little bit of a dark shot here, but congratulations for St. Joe, a big win for them tonight. And they got a very tough Bozeman next week in yeah. St. Joe. That'll be an interesting one. So St. Yeah. Joe with some momentum riding, we'll see, you know, see if those doubters down in the comments will be proven right if St. Joe can get a win <laughs> next week. But uh, I do see, speaking of, Holmes County will beat Bozeman easy. I, uh, I that's a, that's a, I, I, right now, I like Holmes County as the best 1A school in our area. They've okay. proven it. They've beaten Shipley. They've beaten Sneeds. You know, it, it'll tell in a couple of weeks. And when, continuing to put know. on perf impressive performances as right. well with Similar. that. Right, and, similar. And that's another thing is it's not just, you know, Bozeman's not just beating these bad teams. They're beating them handily. Holmes County, they're not just beating these bad teams. They're beating them handily, 55 to 13, not 55 to 7. Yeah. But, yes, that'll be a fun one. We got to get through Bozeman St. Joe, Bozeman Shipley, but Bozeman Holmes County, if Bozeman can somehow get through Chipley and through St. Joe, which don't take that lightly, I that would be very tough. I would be oh, yeah. dumbfounded if they could get through both of those undefeated. But if we got an undefeated Bozeman against a one-loss Holmes County, that one right there, mark your calendars because it will be a fun one. Oh, yeah. We got another big one tonight. We were Hitchka in Liberty County. We were a seven-point victory against a team that has won three in a row. That defense, Bobby Johns and that crew, they were all over yeah. it tonight. That crew was that front seven looking just <laughs> absolutely nasty. I love this one. I right love here. this Ryan one too. Very looking for the dump and the big man interception and what taking him to the goal line. What this made me think about with you know, we were. Their whole goal is to have all their players know how to play at least three different positions. Trying to get this small team to be able to be moved around wherever they could go. And just seeing that play, it was just kind of, in my mind, I just thought of Bobby Johns talking about how he wants his players to really be so versatile. And so you see right there. So I like that for them. Right. And this is a, you know, a team that last week, Liberty County beat Sneeds and we're like, what is going on? Yeah. Sneeds, what is happening with Sneeds? Liberty County, are they now a team that can really be the real deal? We haven't seen a ton from Weewa. They've been playing some teams from out of the area this yeah. year, but this is one that when it comes to playoff time, because these are both be teams be mm -hmm. vying for those positions and vying for those seeds. This is a big one. This will make a big difference. You know, you might not see it now where both are just hanging around 500, excuse me, but 
this will be one that really kind of makes a difference at the end of the year, but a big win there for Coach Bobby Johns in the Wee Wahitchka Gators, 14-7. to I, I know that Liberty <laughs> County's got to be hurting tonight. Yeah, it just makes you think. I mean, this is this is the fun part about sports when all of these – Obviously not for the team on the losing side, but you know, seeing Snead swallow to Liberty County last week, we will beat Liberty County this week. I mean, it's just the craziness of it. It's fun to watch. It's shocking if you told me that all of this before the the season started, I would have told you that you were lying. But <laughs> it's interesting to see. Hey, that's a parody. We're having fun, and it's only going to get more fun next week with Week Eight again. Cottonale big win tonight. Mosley a tough loss. We had a couple more with uh, Holmes County picking up a big, big win From tonight. South Walton. 55 to 13. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> South Walton, and they lose big to the very talented Choctaw Indians. I'm sure Cole Tab uh, probably had a big, big portion to do with that. He's a very talented running back over there for Choctaw, one of the best in the state for sure. But we got some fun ones next week. We we do got some fun ones. We got Mosley at Crestview. That is a district ball game, I believe. We got Rutherford North Behaven for sure a district ball game. Uh St. John Paul at Arnold. And then Bay versus South Walton. That's another district game. Mm-hmm. Rutherford North Behaven, Bay South Walton, all in the same district. These yep. are very important to how the rest of the season plays out. Then we got that one that we were talking about earlier. Bozeman at Port St. Joe. St. Joe now I think improving to four and two is that right? That uh, St. Joe's four and two. And they've had yeah. some tough losses against uh, Bluntstown last week, and uh, one more this year. That was a pretty tough one. But that's now an undefeated Bozeman at St. Joe. That one could be really interesting as far as potentially game of the week right there. We'll have yeah. to look at the rest of our options. But Graceville at Vernon. Graceville uh, been struggling this year. Vernon could definitely look at a bounce back. They'll have to. Turn the lights a little brighter to see if we can uh, if we can catch them getting a win on camera. And then uh, Cottondale at Baconton Charter, Baconton, uh, they're, they're BC, Boston College. I don't know. Cottondale, <laughs> I like they're going to be playing at Baconton Charter. Baconton and Charter. And then uh, Franklin County, they're going to be at Weewahitchka. Weewahitchka rolling with the momentum. Liberty County, they're going up to Troy, Alabama. Go Trojans. Uh, but they will be going on the road to face Pike Liberal Arts. Freeport, they're going to be at Holmes County. Holmes County, like I said, they're impressive so far. They've done everything right. I'm assuming they'll be looking for another big win next week. Field conditions after the rodeo, too. That's right. It will be a dust pile up there. (laughs) I've been to some games after the rodeo. You make a tackle and everybody disappears. That's it's just what happens. If you don't believe me, you'll see the highlights next week. We'll try to turn uh, the lights up so you can see it. But uh, Sneed's going to go to Lighthouse Christian. Uh, They certainly now after is that three straight, four Four. straight losses for Sneed's. Holmes County, Miller County, Liberty County, and Blentstown. They're going to be desperate for a win. Desperate that that if if that's one that they're like, okay, we need to win this if if we want to compete for the playoffs. Like they certainly need that one. I'm sure they're going to try to put a a statement. Chipley coming off a bye. I know Coach Buchanan was probably keeping an eye on that Bozeman Destin game because they've got Destin and Bozeman in back to back weeks. So Chipley will go on the road to Destin. Destin, we looking to bounce back. Uh, that's another district game, right? Pensacola Catholic at Walton. Mm-hmm. That should be a that's tough homecoming one. for Walton as well. Very tough one. Walton's still undefeated, but Pensacola Catholic doesn't let anything come easily. Gadsden County, another talented team, I believe, also in Mariana's district. So. We got a lot of district matchups that mm-hmm. really, really make a Max difference. Max Preps next doesn't week. have Mosley Crestview as a district matchup. So it's non district. Non district? Yeah. Okay. I was stand corrected on that one. See, Cottondale's getting creative with the schedule. That's that's right. They do play a lot of teams from around the area. They they do like uh, boosting those stats a little bit. We'll, <laughs> we'll see uh, how that kind of folds out with the FHSAA rankings at the end of the year because. They've taken some beatings and they've given some beatings. Tonight, so, seventy points. Yeah, they they do uh, they do put up the points, but yes, uh, we had a lot of fun games tonight. We got a lot of fun ones next week. Two undefeated teams, Walton and Bozeman. Yeah. We'll see what happens moving forward. Yeah. Any other takeaways from week seven? I just can't believe it's week seven. Yeah, week eight next week. A lot of teams back in action next week, too, which will be good. Right, we had a lot on a bye week this week, so we should have a pretty full slate, a lot of action, and uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how things kind of stack up a bit. That's going to do it for us tonight, Friday Night Fever Afterburn. If you want to watch all the highlights, go to mypanhandle.com. We'll have those up and posted shortly. We enjoy all the comments. We enjoy your feedback. We enjoy your digs. We'll be back next (laughs) week for more of them.